Hello, everyone. It's The Graft here for your Thursday morning news rounds. Now, I've got loads coming up for you over the next few minutes, including find out all about goosebumps in this week's big question. And why is Paddington Bear on these stamps? But first up this morning, if you've got an older sibling who sat their GCSEs this summer, then it could be a pretty nervous morning in your house. Now, students across England, Wales and Northern Ireland will be getting their GCSE results in just a couple of hours' time. Now, overall results are expected to be slightly lower for the second year in a row, bringing them back in line with levels before the COVID pandemic. Some other results like BTEX and Cambridge Nationals are also being released today as well. Well, good luck to everyone getting the results today. Next, India has made history by becoming the first country to land a spacecraft near the moon's south pole. Now, the Chandrayaan-3 mission touched down on the lunar surface yesterday, more than a month after taking off from the Bay of Bengal. Now, the moon's lunar south pole is covered by shadow and largely unknown. Now, the mission will hunt for ice and signs of water, snapping pictures and taking measurements and other data to be sent back down to Earth. Well, you can find out more about the Chandrayaan mission and why other countries are racing to send rockets to the moon over on the Newsround website. Next, he's a best-selling author of books like Millions or the new Chitty Chitty Bang Bang series. And now he has a brand new book out. Martin certainly had a magical time meeting Frank Cottrell Boyce. So, I'm supposed to be interviewing Frank Cottrell Boyce today, but he's running a wee bit late. Whoa, Hello. where did you just come from? Just from outer space. How'd you do that? Magic. All right then, I take it you're not going to tell me because a magician never tells me. A right? magician never tells. But can you tell me about your new book, The Wonder Brothers, please? The Wonder Brothers is the story of two little children who have a magic act and they live in Blackpool. And one day a big magician comes and for a stunt makes Blackpool Tower disappear. Why Blackpool Tower in particular? Blackpool Tower because, well, Blackpool is the world capital of magic. Magic things happen in Blackpool. Blackpool Tower is magnificent and it would be terrible if it disappeared. Now, Frank, if you thought my questions were tough, you just wait because we've got some questions from our very own Newsround viewers. Uh, first one is, why did you start writing books? I started writing books because the books that I read between the age of like 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, they really made me and they really built like a happy place inside me. What made you want to be an author? Well, I think I wanted to be an author because I love books and thought, oh, I want to be part of that. And also when you read authors' lives, they're always like, he was in the Spanish Civil War and he was on a whaling ship and all these like fantastically adventurous things. What advice do you have for kids who want to write stories but don't know where to start? Um, two pieces of advice. One, just start anywhere. You'll find the beginning eventually, but just start anywhere. And then the other is, just read. I mean, that's the same advice for if you want to be a baker, you want to be a brain surgeon, just read. Because it will make you happier. It builds that happy place inside you. Frank, it really has been a pleasure to talk to you and learning about your new book and seeing some of your magic tricks. Thank you very much. I've got to, I've got to get going, but unfortunately, I'm, I'm running a wee bit late. Can Where you... have you got to go? Oh, I've, I want to go to America, okay. East Coast. Get me on that flight. I'll sort you out, Martin. Brilliant, okay. thanks. So take Martin across the Atlantic in just one tick. Ah, how magical. Next, over on the Newsroom website, we've been asking you whether you think you're doing enough PE after children's charity Youth Sports Trust says that cuts to PE lessons should be a matter of immediate concern. Well, loads of you have been getting in touch, so let's start with this Newsroom viewer who wrote in to say, I like PE, but in my school, we share a gym hall with secondary, so we don't always get that much time. We also heard from Butterfly Bunny who wrote in to say when I was in year six, we barely had enough PE lessons. Sometimes we would only have one lesson in three weeks. Well, Stitch Sparkle says that they're not happy because they think they do too much PE and that they think that school is actually making them lose their love of sport. 
Well, finally, let's add, end with Izzy, who puts it simply by saying, I love doing PE, it's so much fun. Well, guys, there's still loads of time to have your say over on the News Run website, so make sure you head there to leave a comment, and you never know, you might just get it read on the News Round. Next, it's time for one of your big questions, and it's a good one for when things get a little bit chilly. This week's big question is, why do we get goosebumps? From Lily, who's 10 and lives in Nottingham. Goosebumps can pop up on parts of your body when you feel a blast of cold air or hear a scary noise coming from outside the window. But what exactly makes our skin go all bumpy like that? Well, a physical feeling like being cold or emotional feeling like being scared what? triggers a chemical in our bodies called adrenaline. The body reacts to this chemical by tightening the tiny muscles attached to the hairs on your skin. These super muscles raise the follicles above the rest of your skin and voila, you've got bumps. Those bumps are the base of the hair where the skin is squeezed up. Animals also have these tiny muscles that make their hair stand up. But you're not going to see those goosebumps on something that funny. Having fluffier hair can make an animal look bigger if they feel threatened. Your cat or dog may also react this way to keep themselves warm and toasty in the cold weather. Ah, oh, thanks for that, Martin. The more, the more you know, even. Right, time for a quick look at the latest news from the World Athletics Championships. And it was an exciting race last night as Great Britain's Josh Kerr won gold in the 1500 metres, making an epic dash for the finish line. It was the first medal ever for Kerr at a world championship. The women's pole vault ended in two gold medals being given out as the USA's Katie Moon and Australia's Nina Kennedy decided they would both accept first place together. They had both cleared the highest jump and instead of competing again in a jump off, they decided to share. And tonight it's the men's and women's semi-finals for the 200 metres. For the women's race, Great Britain have Dina Asher-Smith who won gold in the race four years ago. And in the men's, Zarnell Hughes will be looking to secure himself another medal after his bronze in the 100 metres. And finally, in preparation for Paddington Bear's 65th birthday, Royal Mail are releasing 10 special stamps with his face on. Now, you might know Paddington from the films, but the first time he appeared was in the book way back in 1958. Now, these new stamps will show some of the original comic strip drawings of Paddington and famous moments from his TV show, which came out over 40 years ago. Right, that's all we've got time for, but I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Bye.